Hey, Phil Smith here. Been working on my top 10 lists here for the new year, and I think I have it narrowed down fairly well. Like I did last year, I'm referring to my computer in front of me, so don't get weirded out if I happen to glance back and forth a lot. It's just the way I do stuff, you know? But it has been quite a year. Christmas just passed. It's now about 2012, and I think this is a pretty good set of lists for this time. I have narrowed it down to a collection of 10 lists, just like I did last year, and there's going to be some stuff in there that wasn't included in last year's collection, so be prepared for a few unexpected items in here, but nonetheless, it's still a good list, and, well, I'm holding the pad in my hand here, and as you can see, I just kind of started writing on there, but the more I think about it, it's just easier to glance at my computer for this. So. The first of two videos for the end of the year in my life, Phil Smith, we're starting with the top 10 lists of 2011. First item, the top 10 favorite CDs I enjoyed listening to in 2011. At number 10, Ritual by White Lies. Number 9, Something to Die For by The Sounds. At number 8, Young Love by Matt Kearney. At number seven, Sky Full of Holes by Fountains of Wayne. At number six, The Other Side of Zero by Elizabeth and the Catapult. Number five, the Tron Legacy Reconfigured Soundtracks, collection of remixes of the songs that were featured off the Daft Punk soundtrack they made for Tron Legacy. Number four, Copies, Clones, and Replicants, a collection of covers done by Powerman5000. Number three, Alpocalypse, Weird Al Yankovic. Number two, 21 by the woman I've always said could very well be my future wife, fingers crossed, Adele. And at number one, number one favorite CD of 2011, They Might Be Giants, Join Us. I got really into They Might Be Giants this year, and you're going to hear a little bit more about them in my top 10 favorite things about 2011. At number nine now, we have the top nine favorite TV shows. Number nine, Two and a Half Men, and I still enjoy it even with Ashton Kutcher and not Charlie Sheen. Number eight, Glee. Number seven, The Big C. Number six, Mike and Molly. Number five, The Office. Another item that is going to be included on the top 10 favorite things about 2011. I'd never watched The Office before. I tried to get into it, didn't work out the first time. Tried to get into the British version, hated it. Got into it a second time with the Americanized version and loved it. So that's now on there. Top nine favorite TV shows at number five, The Office. Number four, Modern Family. Number three, Weeds. And number two, How I Met Your Mother. And number one, again, for 2011, The Big Bang Theory. Number eight now, top eight movies that I enjoyed seeing for the very first time. These are movies that have been out prior to 2011, but 2011 was the first time I'd ever watched them. Number eight, Coming to America with Eddie Murphy. At number seven, Whatever Happened to Baby Jane featuring Joan Crawford and Betty Davis. Number six, Rosemary's Baby with Mia Farrow. Number five, Stanley Kubrick's The Killing with Sterling Hayden. Number four, The Twelve Chairs, directed by one of my all-time favorites, Mel Brooks. One of the first and last of his movies that I saw this year, next to um, Life Stinks. Those were the two Mel Brooks movies that I had yet to watch, and I had seen just everything else. So for the first time this year, I actually got to see both The Twelve Chairs and Life Stinks, but truth be told... 12 Chairs was my favorite out of those. Number three, Benny and June with Johnny Depp. If any of you love Johnny Depp, and I'm sure there's a lot of you, see Benny and June. It is a beautiful, beautiful movie. Johnny Depp plays a character who has always tried to become the next Buster Keaton, and he really does some great stuff in that film. Highly recommend it. Again, number three, Benny and June. 
Number two, Silver Streak with Richard Pryor and Gene Wilder. This was the first of the Gene and Richard films that I saw this year. And while there were others, you know, Another You, See No Evil, Hear No Evil, and um, Stir Crazy, Silver Streak was my absolute favorite. And Gene Wilder is absolutely hysterical in it. I highly recommend renting it. It is a laugh riot. Number one of the top eight movies I enjoyed seeing for the very first time this year, Halloween 2. Not the Rob Zombie version, the 1981 version. Following immediately after John Carpenter's 1978 Halloween, Halloween 2, in my opinion, scarier than the first one, which is always better to me. If a movie that is a sequel is scarier than its predecessor, I'm going to enjoy it a hell of a lot more. Now we move on to number seven, the top seven movies that I enjoyed seeing in theaters this year. And it almost didn't happen. Due to my unemployment, I didn't get to see a lot of movies this year until about August or September. So this, I didn't think was going to be part of the list, but I managed to see quite a few movies, and I'm still seeing more movies as we speak. Here we go. Number seven, Rango, featuring the voices of Johnny Depp. Number six, Black Swan with Natalie Portman. Great, great and yet very mysterious and slightly horrific movie. But Natalie definitely deserved that Oscar. I applaud you, Natalie. You earned it. Number five, Scream 4 with Nev Campbell. Number four, The Muppets featuring, who else? The Muppets. Number three, Drive with Ryan Gosling. Number two, Paul with Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. And number one, even though it didn't do so at the box office, it dealt with a year, or rather a decade, that I just absolutely loved, the 80s, and that movie was Take Me Home Tonight with Topher Grace and Anna Faris. Number six, the top six friends that I enjoyed hanging out with. Now, I'm not discriminating against anyone here. I'm just going off the top of my head, who I seem to spend the most time with this year in 2011. So if you feel left out, don't. There's always next year to hang out again. And more often. More often. Is that an oxymoron? Whatever. I'm not an English major. Hanging out more in 2012. <laughs> Number six, Rochelle Weiss. Number five, Senda Reinhardt. Number four, Christopher Durr. Number three, Jeff Grandstrom. Number two, Kristen McCoy, who has her own little special place on my own top ten of 2011. So, Kristen, you watch out for that one. And number one, of course, my best friend out here, Paul Seavey. Moving on now, down to number five. We're rolling along here. Top five songs that I enjoyed listening to throughout 2011. These are songs that I constantly found myself putting on repeat on my iPod or just singing along, finally getting all the lyrics under my head. Number five, Under Pressure by Queen and David Bowie. One that I've often tried to sing at karaoke when hopefully there's not someone else singing Ice Ice Baby because they do kind of go together, don't they? Number four, Rolling in the Deep by Adele. Number three, Dr. Worm by They Might Be Giants. Number two, Superman, the theme to the former NBC show Scrubs by Laszlo Bain. This song particularly became my new theme when I would go to karaoke. I don't sing it as much as I used to, but time and time again I'll get up and uh, I will put on a pretty good rendition of Superman by Laszlo Bain. And number one, my second favorite Queen song, but definitely a song that I found myself constantly playing over and over and over again this year. One Vision by Queen. Down now to number four, the top four places that I enjoyed hanging out. Number four, the Red Label Bar, home to Karaoke Triple X, which also has a place in my top ten favorite things about 2011. Number three, my buddy Paul Seavey's house. 
Number two, the Sahara West Library, and number one, I believe it's been number one for three years in a row now, maybe four, Zia Records, both the Eastern and Flamingo location and the Sahara Indicator location. Number three, and this one I had to modify a little bit because the original items on this list I actually managed to get this year. This one is the top three things that I hope to purchase in 2012. Well, truth be told, I now own two of the items that were originally on there. Originally, I had put on there an external terabyte hard drive and a 60 gigabyte iPod. Well, I got the new iPod. This baby here holds 160 gigs. Yeah. I've been putting feature length films on this. God bless the digital copies now. I know a lot of you people think it's pointless, but hey, you put those bad boys on this thing and you can watch them over and over again. I also got the external terabyte hard drive as a gift from my office for our Christmas party. And I've never been happier. I have cleared up my computer so much. I have so much more free space. It's really, really great. It's a great space saver. A terabyte can hold as much as whatever's on two computers. It's incredible. So all that has been changed now. My new items for this. The top three things I hope to purchase in 2012 are now as follows. Number three, a ticket to Disney World. I have been wanting to go back to Disney World since I left there in 2009 for the Herbie's 40th get-together we had with our Love Bug fans message board. And I went to Disneyland earlier this year, actually not earlier, um, a couple months ago actually, November the 1st with my cousin. And I suddenly realized now why I haven't been back to Disneyland. This was only my second trip there. And I just really prefer Disney World to the land. I guess it's because they have more theme parks and it's less, I guess, kiddie centric. There's a little bit more for adults to do there as well. And honestly, I just, I've always loved Disney World. I know it like the back of my hand, you know, and I've gone there over 15 times. So. I say next year, maybe even as a treat for my birthday, I plan to get a ticket to spend at least one whole week in Orlando, Florida and just have an absolute blast. So that's going to be one of my new things that I hope to purchase in 2012. That's number three. Number two, these are more personal items for myself, the Mel Brooks Blu-ray collection. There's this incredible box set of Mel Brooks movies on Blu-ray, jam-packed with brand new bonus features and interviews that I really want to purchase. And I know I can afford it, I just haven't bought it yet, mainly because I'm trying to focus on paying off a lot of bills and whatnot, but time will come where I'm sure next year I will be buying the Mel Brooks Blu-ray collection. And number one, another item that I had hoped to get this year, but again, kind of holding off and taking care of what's more important right now, money-wise, but number one for next year, I hope to purchase the Quadrophenia Director's Cut box set. And if any of you have seen uh, my posts about this on Facebook, you know what I'm talking about. It's that Who album Quadrophenia in a big box that contains remastered album, original demos, replica of the 515-45 single, and an expansive booklet detailing the making of the album. That's the number one item I intend to purchase in 2012. Down now to number two, the top two resolutions for 2012. Number two, and this is exactly how I wrote it, so I'm going to read it right back to you here from my computer. Enjoy the company of a woman who may just become the perfect girlfriend after having now been single two years in a row. I recently joined Plenty of Fish, and if any of you know anything about that website, you know just how easy it can be to meet people. Now, I've had a lot of uh, hits and a lot of misses. Uh, I really just want to see how things go with a lot of these women that I've been getting in touch with. And 
whatever happens, happens, but I am not going with that old mentality of everything happens for a reason. I, you know, get cut that philosophy out of my life permanently. But uh, it's going well. I'm meeting people, which is a plus. And no one's getting too freaked out from me. I have uh, just been very upfront and honest now, which is something that I think was lacking in a lot of my previous relationships, you know. So I'm very upfront with what I want, very honest, and if it comes down to it, blunt. But I think sometime in uh, 2012, there may just be someone new in my life. And you know what? That would be great. If not, so be it. Life goes on. And number one resolution for 2012, get a new job. I have been at uh, Adventure Photo Tours now for a little over five months now. And I'm going to tell you the truth, I don't like it anymore because it has gotten severely tiresome considering that I wake up to go to work at 3.15 and I work 5 in the morning till about 2, 3 in the afternoon. I don't like it. I am missing out on a lot and I am completely uh, becoming, I'm, I'm on the way to becoming a narcoleptic you might say. You know, I don't know about you but, yeah. what was I saying? Yeah, that kind of stuff. Falling asleep without knowing it. I don't like it. I'm trying very hard to find something new back in the world of TV or radio. And if any of you out there have any leads, please don't hesitate to contact me about them, okay? I'd really, really like to have something new buyer before February at this point. That would really be great. That's my number one thing. Get a new job. Finally, and I'm sure you'll know what this is because if you've been keeping in touch with me since I first started these things back in about oh, 2005, then you'll know what this is. The top thing to keep doing no matter what happens. Number one, have fun. That's all there is. I hope you've enjoyed this list. I've done it a little bit quicker than last year, so Hopefully, by the time I get around to uploading this, it'll be up before New Year's Eve. Next one will be my top 10 favorite things about 2011. So, once again, thank you for watching as always. Thank you to all my friends out there in Las Vegas, all my friends on the East Coast. Hey, I'm going to see you guys in November of next year. Class of 2002 reunion, Brandywine High School. So until then, this is Phil Smith. Signing off, you have a great 2012.